You're listening to an episode of the Matthias Mazur podcast. This one is taken from one of our YouTube videos. Check out the YouTube channel for more. Thoughts on building a hundred million dollar portfolio. And I want to give you this because this will really help you in your business, whether you're starting out or whether you're doing several million dollars a month. So over the last few years, I've been building a portfolio business that does around $30 million a year right now. And the goal is to get it to over a hundred million dollars in the next three to five years. And so I want to break down a few things of the way I think, the way I view business in general and the way we are operating to grow the portfolio business uh, in a very consistent and predictable way. The way I see things is I see business in uh, different buckets, right? So uh, some of the businesses we have are pure cash cow businesses. So whether you're a copywriter, a designer, a media buyer, a manager, whatever the case may be, publishing business where you publish information, where you sell information in the form of ebooks, audio guides, videos, coaching, consulting, generally those businesses have huge margins, right? up to 80 plus percent, but ultimately they generate a lower resale value because the barrier to entry is much lower. So I see those as cash cow businesses. They're great to generate cash. Uh, they're great to generate money that we can then reinvest in something else. But ultimately the uh, potential of reselling that business is very low and that's perfectly okay. Now, if you have one of those cash cow businesses, grow it, make as much money as you can. But keep in mind that at some points, the offer that you're running will slow down because it will inevitably attract competition in the market. The more your ads are seen, the more people will understand that they make money, that you're making money and that they can make money too. And you will inevitably attract two, three, five other serious competitors. That's fine. Run as hard as you can, make as much money as you can, but make sure you understand that at some point the offer will die. So that's in terms of cash cow businesses. We have several and they do very well. Millions and millions of dollars a year. But I also know the resale value is very low and I see it as close to zero. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there's what I call equity businesses. And the thing with equity businesses is they generally take more time to build up and to generate the same amount of cash that a cash cow business would generate. But what I love about those is that the resale value is much higher. So we have several in the portfolio. We have several offline businesses that, yes, generate less cash than the cash cow businesses that can be up and running within days. There's a bigger barrier to entry uh, to get into a, uh, an offline business. There's a bigger barrier to entry to put together a business that is, for example, in the software industry, which we have several of. But the resale value is tremendously higher than a cash cow business. So it's important to understand the difference in the businesses that you operate or the business that you operate. If you're starting a business today and you think you can resell it, you need to make sure that you're in the right type of business. So cash cow businesses will make you a lot of money that you can then take and reinvest into other things like real estate or just you know, live an amazing lifestyle and enjoy life. But the truth is it will not create generational money. It won't make you money that you can then retire on and pass on to your kids. You will need to uh, do more. And that's where the equity businesses come in. And that's what a lot of people just stop. They just uh, focus on building cash cow businesses and that's fine, but they kind of mix things up. They think they can build a cash cow business and then sell it when, when the, the resale value and the uh, potential to resell a cash cow business is actually very low, especially if it's only dependent on paid acquisition and paid advertising. The equity businesses are something that I love because they are slower to get up and running. You know, putting together a, an offline business or acquiring an offline business will generally make less money initially. But the great thing is they're much easier to sell and they have a much longer runway. You can operate those businesses for literally decades. Let's talk about a plumbing business, for example, electrician business, a landscape business, an HVAC business, a lot of those businesses that people need on a day-to-day -day basis. And yes, they will generate less money than the big cash cows that can do 20, 30, 50, or hundred thousand dollars a day, but the resale value is much higher. That's why I love having both. And another type of business that we also have is in the software space because the recurring 
value, the, the value of someone paying month after month or year after year for access to a, a software that we all do, right? You pay your Netflix membership every month, Prime every month. It gives amazing value to the business selling you that recurring service. And so that's something that usually takes a bit longer to get off the ground and uh, to generate money. But the resale value on those businesses is very high. So that's why uh, I love having those slower businesses, but that have a much higher resale value. And that's why I don't want to only have and build a portfolio based only on cash cow businesses. We have several. They make millions of dollars a year. They will keep making millions of dollars a year, but the resale value is actually very low. So I want to use the cash. That's basically the whole thesis of the portfolio that we started years ago now, uh, using cash and the income from those cash cow businesses to then acquire businesses that might make less money initially, but that we can grow and then exit. And that's what we've done very well over the last several years. Understanding the difference between a cash cow business and an equity business that has true value, a much higher value over the coming years can really help you build generational money. And again, maybe you're just starting out in your business career, but it's important for you to understand the difference in those different types of businesses. And so depending on where you are right now in your business life, in your career as an entrepreneur, as an investor, you're going to be able to detect and see what type of business you're looking at. Is it a cash cow business that is very easy to replicate and copy? Or is it a longer term player that takes longer to develop, longer to build up, longer to uh, get revenue in, but that has a higher potential to be sold uh, and exited? So again, those are the two things you need to understand. You can do several and that's something that I highly encourage you to look at over the coming months and years is not picking only one, but picking several of these businesses in different categories. So you get the cash, but you also get equity and potential and the potential to sell that business down the line. I basically only do and take on deals where we have equity. Making more cash today is not interesting to me. What I'm really interested in and what I want my teams to be on the lookout for is opportunities where we own the equity, a large percentage of the equity, uh, whether it's through an acquisition or a partnership, that's what we're interested in. And so how do you find these deals? Well, same as finding clients. You just put in the time, you either pay with your time, so you put in the time to research, or you uh, acquire businesses. You literally pay to acquire the equity in a the business. There's a lot of different ways to buy businesses. I might do a video about that specifically, but again, you need to decide what battle you want to fight. Do you want to be in the cash cow business initially and then save money to then acquire, which is one of the things I've done? Um, or do you only want to be in a uh, long-term equity business with you know a, a situation where you uh, look at the next two, three, five, 10, 15 years and really focus on growing something very slowly and you're okay with uh, having very little revenue initially uh, but building something that can then have a higher resale value. So again, it's a very personal decision. The way I see it is you can actually do both. And that's what I encourage you. It's not a question of thinking one or the other. It's a question of doing both if you want to do both. So you can get money quickly from those cash cow businesses and then also build the equity for long-term generational plays where you can build something up for the next 5, 10, 20 years and sell that for two, three, five hundred million dollars in the next 10 to 15 years. And the only way to do that is to stretch your time horizon. And that's the last thing I want to give you in this video is not just thinking about the next three to six months, not just thinking about the next offer, but really thinking about the next three to six years, the next five to 15 years. Because today in today's world, everyone is focused on quick wins. Everyone wants to make money quickly. And those who are okay stretching their time horizon and accepting that they might not make as much money today as others have a higher chance of making a lot more money in the next two, three, five, ten years if they start stretching their time horizon and thinking and making decisions on how is business going to look like in two years, five years, 10 years? Is this a good investment for the long term? 
can this market, will this market still exist in 10 years? And that's my invitation to you is to stretch your time horizon. That's it for this video and I'll talk to you soon.